FOMO. My name's Patrick McGinnis, and I'll admit it, I have FOMO. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you do too. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you learn to channel your FOMO productively, you can make the most of every opportunity while keeping your sanity in the process. This is FOMO Sapiens After Hours, the snackable show about how you can make FOMO a force for good. FOMO. FOMO. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of After Hours. Listen, I'm feeling very thankful this week and I'll tell you why, because I am getting the feedback I have so coveted over uh, the last couple of episodes. I, I know I mentioned like, I don't get to hear back from people. And when I did that recording talking about the hundredth episode and people have been sharing their thoughts with me. And in fact, I've actually been able to talk to some listeners to the podcast directly. I met Claudia when she was in town from Switzerland. I had a Zoom with Julieta down in Buenos Aires. I ran into Romain, who is also a friend from before, but I ran into him in, in the Hamptons of all places. And he gave me some feedback. So I've just been kind of hearing what you guys like about the show. And it's really nice because as I complain to you, sometimes I feel like it's like, you know, I'm in my little, you know, studio in my house doing this and I don't know how it's landing. So it's been really valuable. And I was really happy to receive an email from Wendy Dwyer. Wendy wrote me an email about the shows that she's liked the most and which episodes resonated the most. And then she asked me this question, which I want to read because I think it's a really good topic. So I want to talk about what she asked me today on the show. She said, and I'm quoting here, something I've been wondering for a while about your story. How did you come to be fluent in Spanish, Portuguese, and French? Language and travel is obviously something near to my heart, but I also think it would be a great idea for one of your future podcasts with the world having changed so much in the last 12 months. What do we do with the pent up desire to travel, choosing where to go and how watching others start to travel before us and about the idea of environmental traveling? Is traveling going to be something that is looked down upon due to the environmental footprint we are starting to realize that it has? Just an idea. So there's a lot in there, Wendy, and I love that you took the time to write and some of these things we can definitely talk about on the show. Today, I do want to just kind of hit a couple of the things you asked about because maybe other people are wondering too, and I'm always happy to talk about travel and languages. So let's just start with the language thing. So why do I speak Spanish, Portuguese, and French? Maybe some of you didn't even know I did that, but I do. So the story is when I was in high school in Maine, I studied Spanish and that was a great way to start. Thank you, Mrs. Whitaker. Thank you, Mrs. Karma Hollis. And when I went to college, in fact, I knew I wanted to study abroad. In fact, I had read, I think I'd, I'd read about Argentina and I had written a report in Spanish class about like my year abroad in Argentina that I wanted to do someday. So it was like a fictional account. But when I got to college uh, at Georgetown, I won a scholarship from the Rotary Foundation that covered a full year abroad. And I had to choose a country to do it in. And I ranked Argentina first. And I was able to actually go study there with a full scholarship, which meant a lot to me at the time. Um, thank you, Rotary Foundation. And I was able to then basically, I had to sort of drop out of Georgetown. The rules were you had to direct matriculate. So I had to like find this school, Universidad Torquato y Tela, it's called, and I had to directly apply and then I had to get my own apartment. And it was like living as an adult. And I had like, I think they gave me a thousand dollars a month, which was like the most money I'd ever had to live on. So I was living large in Buenos Aires, uh, as you'll remember from a couple of weeks ago when I took that bus trip in Colombia with my roommate, Danielle. Um, you know, we lived in this cool apartment and it was actually, we had a lot of drama because we were supposed to live in this apartment that was owned by this painter, but then he refused to clean out the hundreds of paintings that he had in the apartment. He had paintings everywhere and he only had like a double bed and we asked him to replace it with single beds, but he just cut the double bed in half so that it like slanted on the floor. So we couldn't live there. We found another apartment, but you know, he and I traveled the whole summer all over the region. And I, my Spanish, thanks to living with Daniel, who was, uh, you know, he's from Spain. So I spoke perfect Spanish and all the people I met in Buenos Aires, I, I learned Spanish with, like with a super Argentine accent. And that actually led me to work in Latin America. My first job out of college was working in the Latin America group 
uh, at JP Morgan and doing venture capital in Latin America. So that was it, off to the races. Now, why do I speak Portuguese? Well, I was working on deals in Latin America and they told me, my boss, Susan Siegel, uh, she said, do you wanna go to Brazil and spend the summer there and we will get you Portuguese lessons? And so I studied Portuguese at the office, but I also lived in Brazil and I just picked it up quickly because it's pretty, it's pretty similar. You have to sort of, you have to sort of remember that they're different languages and not just speak Portuñol as they call it. But I picked up Portuguese pretty quickly and it was an amazing summer. It was actually the summer right before 9-11. I came back right before 9-11 to New York. So I now look back at it as this sort of like innocent summer where the world was perfect and there was no, there was no scary terrorism and stuff. But that's, that's where I learned my Portuguese. Finally, French. French happened after AIG blew up. As you know, many of you know, I was working there until about 2010 and then I left and I had some free time over the summer and I am Quebecois. My grandparents are Quebecois, I'm half Quebecois. And I grew up in a very Quebecois part of the States in Maine and everybody's Quebecois. Uh, but I'd never really been, I don't know, exposed to my culture all that much in a, in a real deep way. It was, it's a, it's a long story. You can just Google the, the history of Quebecois in America. It's, there's a lot in there. But I, uh, I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't that interested. And I kind of thought, ah, oh, like, what do we have besides, you know, Celine Dion and Mario Lemieux? Well, we have a lot of things. In fact, I would argue that the Quebecois are the Catalans of North America because we're good at everything. We're very artistic. We're good at sports. We're cool. And so as a result, I decided I wanted to learn French. And so I started teaching myself basically with a book that I bought because I'd had like a, some, you know, a little bit of French in seventh grade and I had the basics with Spanish and Portuguese. So I started studying that uh, every day for like four hours for a month. And then I signed up for this really challenging French class that was well above my level. I mean, we had to read sort of like books and I was very lost, but there were no grades. So that was a great way to learn. And then I just started practicing more. And I, you know, I think one of the things when you want to learn a language, by the way, is podcasts, Twitter, reading newspapers, you just kind of work it into your day. And I've talked about this in, in I think both my books at this point, it's like, how do you just sort of make it seamless to talk about that thing or to, to read about that thing and just be in that language on a daily basis, sort of integrate it into your life, no matter where you are. So that is why I speak the languages. And I have found, of course, that it's an incredible way to meet people, to travel. I've been able to give speeches now about my books in all three languages. I've done television interviews in, in Spanish and Portuguese, not in French. I don't think nobody's like clamoring for me to do a French interview quite yet. I'm working on that, but you know, not quite yet. So that is the story of the languages. Now, in terms of Wendy's question about traveling going forward, here's my advice. I'm not gonna get into the environmental effects, although I think it's a very important thing to think about. And I just think that like generally being an environmentally minded citizen. So when you travel somewhere, thinking about obviously just leaving a place better than you have found it, thinking about leaving something behind that can do positive in the places you go is really important. I'm sort of, you know, travel and getting on trains and planes and automobiles, it is bad for the environment, but I don't know what's going to change that. So I personally, I'm going to keep traveling, of course. Uh, and I'd love to be able to just flap my wings and end up in Europe, but it's not going to happen. So there's only one way to get there unless you're Greta Thunberg and you go in a little boat, which yeah, I think is amazing, but I'm not going to be doing that. So here's what I do think about travel going forward. Cause I'll admit it. I have been a little bit apprehensive. I did go to Mexico for new year's, which was good, but getting on that plane, I was like stressed and all the masks and you know, it's a, it's, it's intense. And, and I used to travel all the time. I've been to 103 countries and it was like going to Mexico felt like I was going to the moon. So what I have sort of resolved is this number one, I want to go places first where I just feel you know, like things are safe and where it's just like going back to a place that I like. So maybe if you watch my Instagram, we talk a lot about France this summer uh, because we like to feature a country every every month that I like. And so France is kind of in the back of my head, maybe Mexico, places that I know well, I feel comfortable, I speak the language. Um, and I just want to go places where I feel like things will be open. You don't want to go from a place like New York City that is relatively open and then go to some place where you're in quarantine for two weeks. So that's number one. Number two, I am thinking about you know, those bucket list type places for a little later, 2022, 2023, because a lot of the places that I'm excited about going, they're not, um, let, let's say on the beaten path, they're places that are a little bit more remote and therefore it just may not be right 
to be able to go to those places right now because again you just don't want to go someplace where where uh with covid that you can't feel comfortable and so some people want to do that and they should do what they need to do but personally i'm thinking about that as something that comes a little later and i look forward to doing some of those things and there's a lot of places i like to go in asia and africa but again just kind of holding off on those for right now and finally This is one that I think a lot of people who travel a lot need to learn, including myself, which is just be a little more intentional. I have been to like 103 countries and I got to the point where I was sort of like, well, you know, if I'm in this one, it's only a three hour flight. I'll do this other one. That way we can add another to the list and check, 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 check. Uh, No, uh, that not, that doesn't make sense anymore. I think it's a little crazy for many reasons, but right now it just, it's not going to happen. And so I am trying to think about like where I really want to go and why not about checking things off the list. I mean, it's just at some point, like how many countries can you visit? So it's expensive. It takes time and energy. It beats down on your body, all this travel. So if you're going to go somewhere, make sure it's someplace you actually want to go. I know that sounds like a super high class problem. I get it. So if you're thinking like Patrick and you're rolling your eyes, you're right. You should roll your eyes at me because it is a little ridiculous, but, uh, but it's, (laughs) it's just where I am. And so with that, I would love to hear your ideas for travel, where you want to go, what you want to do. And I want to hear from you, just like I did from Julieta and Claudia, Romaine and Wendy. I really appreciate it. And it gives me ideas for the show. So if you have something you want to hear me talk about, or you have an idea, reach out to me at Let's Connect at PatrickMcGinnis.com or find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis or on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. And I will see you back here on Thursday for the next episode of FOMO Sapiens. Until then, take care of yourselves. FOMO. Want more of FOMO Sapiens and After Hours? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.